be looking at John Mayer's Belief from the Where the Light Is live DVD. We're going to be looking at all the guitar parts, John Mayer's rhythm parts as well as the four solos, and I'm going to include David Ryan Harris's Guitar 2 and Guitar 3 Slide Guitar by Robbie McIntosh. You'll find a link to the tab in the description below, and I'll have it on screen as well to follow along. As usual, I've used the isolated tracks from the Blu-ray to make it as accurate as possible. Let's get started. So for sound, starting in measure one, we have a nice overdrive, and to that we add a stop box, and we're in the neck pickup. So I'll flick the pickup selector to the front position, and we have Mayer soloing over some nice chord accompaniment by the keyboardist. The tone sounds like this. up there. So that took us all the way into measure 12. So that's kind of been talked about as the belief tone on a lot of the forums. And it's almost like you take a wet string and you drag it through mud and you hold it up and all the bits of mud and stuff fall off of it. It's just a very thick, chunky tone. Very, very nice. So we're starting off on the 10th fret of the A and we're sliding up to 12. And just vibratoing that. And that's actually held quite a while before going to this. So the first one is the D12. We kind of do a hammer on from G10 to 12, bending it up a bit, and then lining up to 12, and then pulling off twice, and then bending up on G12, bending down, pull off the 10, 12, and then 10 on the D. Slow. Continuing with measure five. So we're starting on the D12, we're coming 10, 12 on the string underneath, and then bending up that G12, with some vibrato. Then we start over again, D12, 10, 12 again underneath, and we have two hammer-ons from G10 to 12. And then we go back to that G10, hit it twice, vibrato, and then end on the well from the G. Then we bend on the B13 and we're going to bend it up, return it to the pitch and pull off to the B10. Yeah, so bend that B13 up, full step, return it, and then pull off to 10. Then go back to that B13, hit it once, and then pull off from 13 to 10. Some vibrato. So. And then we have this unusual first finger bend on the B10. So that's bending up that uh, B10 with the first finger. And we're doing this positionally so it makes sense. So bend up, return it to its pitch, and hit it twice with some vibrato, ending on the G12. So let's do that slow. Continuing from the tail end of measure 9. So we're doing the D10 and then G12 back to 10. And this time on the G12 we're going to bend it up and bend it back. Pull off on the 10 and then on the D12 again. We're going to do a first finger bend on the G10. Return it. D12 and then twice on the G10. Then we get into that crazy fast pull off rundown. That's just a 10 to uh, 12 to 10 on the D, 12 to 10 on the A, slide down to 8 on the A, and then hit the E10. And then on the A10, we're going to go up, slide up to 12, back down to 10, pull off.
pull off to 8, back onto 10 again, and then we're just going to slide up from 8 to 10 on the E, 2, 3, and then A8, and then 2 more, and then slide down. With John Mayer, anytime there's three notes on a string, he's not a three note per string guy. Like he's not gonna go. He's gonna go pull off, pull off, slide all the time. That you'll see this throughout this tune. So let's do that whole thing slow. with measure 13 and this is one you might not want to play like he does on the uh, video <laughs> because it's all muscle memory. It's just a muscle memory lick. So I learned it, tabbed it out. This is what I think he does, but I wouldn't encourage you to do that. Let's learn it in its form and then I'll speak to it a bit after. So we're sliding up from the G5 to the seven and then back down one, back to seven, all the way up to 10, back to seven, to five. Actually, that's a, bit, that's a pull off like that, so. And then we're doing this, we end that little phrase off with a little pull uh, slide from seven on the D to the six, so. And that's just sliding the pentatonic scale up the string in like a linear fashion, like. That's all he's doing. After that, we do this. Uh, So after that we go back to the G5 and we're going to do a slide from uh, 7 to 5, pull off to 3. Actually when Mayer does that he's either pulling off from 7 to 5 and sliding down to 3 or sliding down to 5 and pulling off to 3. It really doesn't matter. He kind of flips back and forth. And then we have this little uh, flat 5 slide. So we come back up, we hit that G7, bend up, down, pull off, and then we're sliding from 7 to 5, and then we go 3 to 5 on the low E, pull off, and then 5, 3, 1, to end. So John Mayer doesn't play that. He's never played it again since he did it on that night. And what I would tell you to do is just improvise it wait, using wait, those wait, scales. Wait, 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 just a second. Wait. <laughs> I don't John play Mayer. exactly the same twice every time because I'm John Mayer. I make that shit up, man. And everybody should. All the so time. You see, even he doesn't play it the same way twice. So uh, let's listen. Let's take little Johnny Mayer's advice. <laughs> As far as improvisational opportunities present themselves, measure 13 is a great place to do your own thing there. This song is in F or D minor, so you've got the D minor pentatonic shape at the 10th fret. And if you take that box position down to the third, you've got the 3, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 2, 5, 6, 3, 6, 3, 5 minor pentatonic box. And then on the 5th fret, you got this one. And that's all he's doing. He's freaking out between those two as fast as he possibly can. So you could start off like he does. But then uh, do your own thing. Make it make it make it cool and fast. There's a lot of opportunities here for those three three note uh, slurry pull offy things. And we have the flat five here. My flat five, if you do the D major scale up here on the 10th fret, that's the fifth, go down one, that's the uh, flat five also here. So when you go, whatever you want to do. 
here. Uh, he certainly does it, so you can too. Tail end of measure 15. <laughs> Drill on the 10 to 12, and then uh, that stops. The drums kick in, and the song gets going. So that's on the third fret of the low E. We go three to five with a slide, and then three on the A. Slide from five to seven on the A. Hold it there for a bit. And then we continue that pattern: five, seven to nine on the D, ending on the G7. And then we're B8, sliding up from B10 to 12, and then E10, and we're going to do a bend on the E13. Then we're going to bend up the E15 and pull off to 13. Then we're going to bend up 12 and, and pull off to 10 in the same fashion. Then there's a double kind of pull off uh, on the G13 and B13. So we're hitting both of those, pulling down to the G12, pulling off to the G10, and then pulling off from 12 on the D to 10, landing on the A12, and then starting that trill on D10 to 12. So once that's going, we're going to do a reverse rake, and you can get some open strings in there. And we're, we're moving, we move the trill to the A10 to 12. And then just keep doing those reverse rakes. Back down to the D string, G string. And then finally the B10 do 12. And that's the last trill we have before the song starts. When you're doing this, you tend to get a tiny bit of the, the high, high uh, E B sounding as well. So not much to say there. That ends the solo part. So again, I find that slow and fairly melodic. I'd repeat that, just like the epic parts. Those are epic, repeat those, I would, but the fast muscle memory stuff, you can improvise your way out of those situations. Measure 25 is the rhythm intro. We've got a clean sound now. We've got our pickup selector number four. So that's one down from five, the neck position that we did this first intro solo in, so put that on four, sounds like this. So the progression is D at the E10, G at the E3, and we have a C note on the A3, and then back to the D, the 10th fret of the low E. As you noticed, between those root notes, he's sliding down in these two note shapes, which go all the way up and down the neck. You just gotta know which ones he's doing for the root note. First one is the E10, the D note. We hit that twice, and we slide into this chord. We do this. So here's the two shapes. First one is third finger on A12. We mute the next string and then the first finger is on G10. We're gonna slide into the low note of that and then hit the high note and then low high again. Then we're gonna do a slide into the next shape. Double slide, so we're sliding into that. We're gonna be substituting our fingers. The next shape, I'm using my second finger on the a10, and my first finger is still on the G string, and it's gonna slide down to G9. So from to this. But getting there, like I said before, he does a slide, a shape slide when he's not singing. Like that, it's very subtle, but it's there. When he sings, he, he dispenses with that, he doesn't do that. And that's the first part. And another thing I'll add is, I tend to do these timekeeping things on beats two and four. He doesn't do that. This intro part is very clean. It's like nothing, nothing in between. Like that, no timekeeping thumps. I might throw them in from time to time. That's the way I play. The next position is the third fret of the low E, twice on there. This time we're sliding into the smaller of the two chord shapes. We're gonna put the second finger on the A8, first finger on the G7. And it's the same rhythm. This 
time we're going to do the chord slide into this shape, which is A7 and G5. So we're going from that to that. This is the shape with the uh, fret in between. You know, one shape has no frets in between, one shape has a fret in between. So one more time, the uh, third fret of the low E, which is the G note. And then we go to the third fret of the A, which is a C note, twice on there. This time we're gonna slide into the A5, and then we're gonna have our first finger on the G3. Same rhythm after that. And we're gonna slide into the smaller shape, which is gonna be on A3, and the first finger is gonna be on G2, so. And then we're gonna come all the way back up to the D note. We're gonna start it like we did before, sliding into the A12 and the G10, but this time we're gonna slide it up into that smaller shape, landing on the A13 and the G12. So last one is. And that's pretty much it. You repeat that twice, and that is the rhythm intro with no singing. Measure 29 is the first singing verse, verse 1, and it starts off with the lyric, Is there anyone who ever remembers? And we play it pretty much the same way as the intro, but once he starts singing, he dispenses with that little chord slide thing I was talking about. Instead of that, he'll go... Just go right to the chord, no sliding into it. It's just hitting it, and then hitting the bottom part of it as the second note. This one he does slide up. And another thing he'll do is he'll change the note values on them and he'll just maybe hit it once instead of twice. I'll show you what I mean right here. See that? So instead of hitting it twice, instead of going, uh, instead of doing that, he'll go once. So instead of, do this and at least one pass through he'll do a double hit on that very last one so he's just playing around and improvising as he's singing he's very much on autopilot so you can throw a couple of these little details in if you like measure 37 is a pre-chorus this has got the lyric oh everyone believes and it sounds like this It's a new series of two sh two note chord shapes. So we're starting on the G note, which is the third fret of the low E. We do two on that. And we're gonna slide into the G7 and the E6. And we're gonna slide down from the G7 to the G5, and then hit the uh, E5. After that, we go to the C note, which is third fret of the A. And we're going to slide into 5-5 five, five on the G and E. And then down to 3-3. Three, three. So one more time. And we're at the F note on the first fret of the low E. This time we're up on the D and B string at the 8th fret. We're going to slide into that. We're going to slide into the D7 and the B6. One more time. And then finally the F sharp, first fret of the A. And that is seven on the D, and then six on the B. We're gonna go five, and then three, like that. One last time on that last A sharp bit. And then you repeat the whole thing. Remember to put that slide down in the first, first part. And then the last pass through, when it ends, we go A, A sharp. That's the last change there. So we don't go down to the threes. We go A sharp twice. One, two, slide into the D7, six. And then we hit that fives twice on the D and B. And then a muted strum like that. And that's the pre-chorus. 
Measure 45 is sort of the interlude. This is uh, four measures where there's a sax solo going on. And Mayer is accompanying using the same progression as the intro and the verse, but he's strumming it more with chords. <laughs> double at the end of the phrase there. So that's all you got to do. So we're trying to hit the A and the G strings at the 12th and uh, 10th, muting that D, and then following that up, and ending with uh, up downs usually for the most part. So just like uh, the intro and the verse, but more strummed. Measure 49 is verse 2. The lyric is, belief is a beautiful armor. And he changes it up yet again. He's doing more strumming. He's kind of got this thing going. And he's just kind of picking out the chords he wants as he goes and rushing some parts of the progression, which sound really nice. In fact, measure 49 is mostly muted strums. I'll just go through it so you can kind of see. Right away, measure 49 is something like that. So just get in the in the habit of doing this and uh, snagging the chords you want. This part here going down to the G, I like that because it's rushed. Instead of uh, what we had before was it's. It's just kind of neat. Let me play through D to the G so you can kind of hear the context. So you get this. Da -da 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 -da. We also have some instances of the double hit there. And to end this off, he's like ending off with a, an open two hits on the open E string. So do what you want with that part. Again, it's completely improvised, and uh, you can make it your own if you want. Measure 65 is the first chorus. The lyric is, we're never going to win the world. And it features some of the craziest rhythm playing to sing over in the John Mayer catalog. <laughs> Strange, eh? So let's just go through measure 65 slow. So did you see that big upstroke there? Keep in mind that the strumming pattern is always going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. On some of the longer notes, like the two intro ones, the 10, 12 on the E and A, that can be down, down, and then down, up, down, muted. The next one is going to be an upstroke because we're down now. So that'll be an upstroke on the A13. And then the next one will be a two note shape. So we're gonna stab with a downstroke. That two note shape is A13 and uh, first finger on G10. And then we're gonna end off with down, up, down, up, uh, muted. And that's measure 65. Measure 66 is. So that is a different two note shape. We have our second finger on the A10 and our first finger is on the G9. So we hit the bottom part of that A10 and then we're gonna stab down at that two note shape. One, two, three. And then we have this upstroke on the E8 and then hit that two note shape again. And then one, two, three, four. So both of that one together slow the whole thing. and both of them together slow. Continuing with 67, we have some rush notes that I'll point out. So 
note was 67 and 68. 67 starts like this, 10, 12, 1, 2. Now we're gonna have a leading note on the A12, down on the 12, up on the 13 like we did before. Stab the chord, 1, 2, 3, and then we're gonna end off with an upstroke on the A10. So it's a weird measure out of context. Just know that these two notes are rushed, this leading and then the 10 hanging in the air there. And uh, the next measure after that, 68, sounds like this. So it starts with this, this note already hit, goes into the measure, does this little bass run up. So A10 is hanging from the last measure. We give that time, we hit the step, one, two, three. And that bass run up is thumb on the E8, second finger on the A10, back to the eight, and then pinky is on the A12, and then we're just gonna go eight, 10, and then 10 on the D to end it off. It's a very awkward fingering, but this is what he does based on the video. Let's play um, 67 and 68 slow together so you can kind of keep the context, hopefully. That's strange. I should also mention that if you're listening to the track and wondering where this is coming from, Guitar 2 does not play the leading notes. Doesn't do that. Only Mayer does that. And the way it's mixed, sometimes you don't really hear it. But I'm listening to the isolated tracks, and I'm telling you it's in there. It's kind of neat when they were doing the pre-rehearsal. It's like, are you going to lead into that thing and belief? And the other guitar is like, eh. And Mayer is like, eh. And it kind of sounds neat in the context. One rushes the notes, one doesn't. It, it's all good. Continuing with measures 69 and 70. So the difference there is we have the 10, 12, 1, 2, 3, 13. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4. And then open, open to end that off. And then the next measure is the 10, to a nine on the G chord. One, two, three. So the bass run up is different. We have eight, a bit of a pause, and then we have 10, 12 on the D this time, and then eight, 10, 10, ending on the D. Both together slow. The last two measures of the chorus, 71, 72. So a bit of rushing there, but we don't have the leading uh, A12. We have the A13. And we have two strums here of the chord. One, two, three, ending off with an upstroke on the A10. For measure 71, one more time. And that rings into the final measure, 72. And it basically ends with two pumps of the uh, E8, uh, uh, and then down, up, down, up, muted. Both of those together slow. So you can see there's a lot of improvisation all over this chorus. So uh, I would try to make it generic as possible if I was playing it. You can get creative on the that thing there because they're different every time as well. You'll see later on in the song if you look in the tab. I won't show those variations. And then I really like the rush notes as opposed to the first pass through which is like Yeah, I really like the uh, rush stuff that Mayer throws in, and it sounds great when paired against Guitar 2, who isn't doing it. Measure 81 is John Mayer solo number one. We've got the neck position, pick up and play, and our overdrive sound with a stomp box added. <laughs> So 
Starting at measure 81, we start with a slight rake and a slide from B13 to 15, which we hold with some vibrato. Then we stop that note with a reverse rake, and there's some open strings sounding on the track there. The next portion is a bend on the G12, hitting it unbent, and then pulling off to B10, and then we have a very slight kind of slide from the G12 area, like that. That kind of thing. Then we continue with this lick. So it's bending up the G12 again, hitting that unison bend on the B10, pulling off from 13 on the B to 10, and then bending again on the G12, and then hitting the B10 again, and then 12 on the G, bending up, returning to pitch, pulling to the G10. Then we go on the A12, we hit it once and then slide it. Then A10 to 8, slide from A10 to 12, back to 10, and then 12 again, and then G10. Then we do this lick. That's a pull off from D12 to 10, and then A12 to 10, hammer-on 11 to 10, E13, and then back to the A10. So let's do those two combined with that lick we did at the start. When we go down to the fifth position, starting at the G5, we do this. So G5, hit it once, slide from 5 to 7 on the G, muted chunk, 5 to 7 again. New muted chunk, final slide from 5 to 7. This time you're going to hold it and then pull off 7 to 5 and then chain it into this on the D and A string. So that slur is, starts on D7. We're going to slide from D7 to 5. Turn that into a pull off 5 to 3. And then on the A string, pull off 5 to 3. Off. So. together. And then starting down in the third position we do this. So we have a muted down up and we have some hammer-ons from three to five on the D with a muted strum in between. Then we have reverse rake. We end off on the D5. We bend it up a half step. Return it to normal, pull off on the D3. So that's... We have a slide down around the G12 area. And then we slide back up to this little two note thing. So that is first finger on B13, second finger on G14. We slide that up like this. Actually it's all slides, but I find them hard to do each individual ones looks like that so I get away with so slow from the top and then we're gonna end off with this non-committal slide at the end so that's a reverse rate coming out of that little two note Reverse rake, we're going to hit the A12. Then we're going to come up 10 12 underneath that string. Same on the next one. G10, we're going to bend the G12, hit it normal, and then G10, back to 12, back to 10, and then 12, 10 on the D. This you vibrato a little bit before finishing off with. 
we're going to go 10, 13 on the B. We're going to go 10, 13 on the high E. Bend up that little high E just a quarter. Come back to the E10, B13, E10, twice. And then a little really kind of non-committal slide from the G12. Like that, not really sounded. So the whole thing's slow. I like to rake into those high ones. I really want to give it some attitude. And that does it for solo number one. Directly after the solo, John Mayer winds things down a bit with four bars before Guitar 2 takes its little chord solo. So, he does this kind of thing, some scratchy stuff. And that leads into the Guitar 2 solo. So what he's doing there is these little two note shapes. Let's look at the first one. So we, we start off with some scratching. And then he goes. First shape is second finger on D10, first finger on D9. And we go. So. And then the next two shapes are A12 and D12. And then uh, A10 and D10. So we go. with the E10 slide down. So let's work that into the rhythm. Coming up and hitting that E10. E, uh, E10. So that's a neat little thing he does before the second guitarist solo. The Journey 93 is David Ryan's chord solo, and I'm going to throw it in here. I'm going to do the rest of his parts at the end of the video, because I think it makes sense sandwiched between the two Mayer solos. So we have a clean sound, pick up selector number four, sounds like this. Very simple, very effective, one of my very favorite parts in the whole tune. So let's break down the first two starting measures of that slow. We start off with that E10 slide out and a muted strum. Then we do these three chords. So we hit each of those five times and there's uh, three muted strums, three muted strums, and then four muted strums. So let's start with those chords. The first one is barring 10th fret, D, uh, D10, all the way down. And we're gonna start on an up stroke. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three. And then the next one is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. That shape is second finger on the D10, first finger on the G9. So one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, strummed. And then the last one is the eighth fret, B and E barred there, and we do five of those. One, two, three, four, five. And this time we go one, two, three, four. Muted strums. Let's do that slow. One, two, three, four. So once you kind of get that down and check the tab out, you've got the, the overall. Continuing with measures 95 and 96, they start off with a 10, 8, 10 on the bass E here. So the chords there are, we have the 10th fret, two middle strings. And then we have second finger on the G9, first finger on the B8. And then just slide that down two frets so you're on the 7th and 6th frets. So. And here's the rhythm. We start off with 10, 8, 10. And we have one on the 10th fret. And then strum. And then two. Two strums. And then one on the 10th fret. And then go to the 9th fret chord. So. And then we have two 
muted strums, and then two on the ninth fret position, and then one on the ninth fret position, and then slide down to the seventh, ending off with two, and one, two, three, four. Let's do that slow. So it's very subtle, so follow the tab. And there's a slapback echo on the track, so that kind of confuses things, but it's kind of notated without the echo in place. Measure 97 and 98 are very similar to the intro ones we did. Except we slide into that uh, 10th fret chord from the 9th fret. So that's the only difference, little slide in. After that, uh, we go. And that's the difference there. We end a bit quicker and we don't strum as much on the ninth and seventh fret chords. So the 10th fret part is still the same. Uh, 10, 8, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's how we end that off. So ninth position chord. And then just one on the seventh position, and uh, that sets up John Mayer guitar solo number two. Let's do that last part slow. And incidentally, this rhythm figure is what Guitar 2 plays underneath guitar solo number 2 for John Mayer, which is coming up. John Mayer guitar solo number 2 starts to measure 100, but there's actually a little lead up of it in, in the previous measure as David Ryan Harris's guitar part is finishing. This time he's got the electro harmonics micro synth effect on. It sounds like this. <laughs> Very, very strange sound. I don't have a micro synth. I've got a wah and um, a pie uh, fuzz on here doing that kind of thing. I had a pitch shifter at one point. So play around and see what you can do to get this kind of sound. So let's look at John Mayer guitar solo number two. I'm gonna keep the sound on so we know where we are in the song. And like I said before, it starts in measure 100. And we have a little bit of a lead up. So measure 100 starts with the D10, lightly hit the A12, and then the D12 to 10. Some vibrato, and off like that. Then we go, so that's two on the D12, one, two, 10, 12 on the G, and then bend that G12 up, and that's measure 100. So slow. And that leads us into measure 101 when the solo actually starts. So measure 101 has G12 to G10. And then we have D12. And then we're going to bend with the first finger G10. Return to D12. And then two G10s. And then 12. So let's do that slow. And there's some scratches in between the two parts. So in the middle of measure 102, we do a very similar motif after some muted scratching. So as you recall, last time we did this two note. Now it's three. One, two, three. After some muted strumming. So let's look at that. That's three on the D12. And then 10, 12 on the G. Bend that G12 up. Come back to G12, vibrato, and back to 10. Then we do a rake on B13. Then we hit the B11, slide down to 10, hammer on to 11, pull off to 10, land on the G12. So from the top. Then 
Landing on the D12, we hit the D12 again and do a series of pull-offs as fast as you can across the last four strings. So that's starting on the G12 to 10, pull off. Pull off on the D12 to 10. Slide from A12 to 10, pull off to eight. And then pull off from 10 to eight on the low eight. Find yourselves in the middle of 104 now. We're gonna do two bends that are kind of similar, small differences. We do this. So we're, we're starting off on the D12 after some little bit of scratching. And the first one is kind of two D12s pretty fast. And we have 10, 12, 12, 10 on the G. Before bending the B13 and then grabbing the E10 on the high E. And then we scratch some more and we do another one. This one's a bit different. We put a rest in between the D12s. And there's a chromatic run up on the second one. So let's concentrate on that second one. D12, rest, D12 again. And then 10, 11, 12, 10 on the G. And then the same B13 bend. Catch the E10 on the top and then mute everything. Let's do those two bends slow. Right near the beginning of measure 106, we are about to start a bunch of faster bends, repeated bends, and we have a different way to get into it where you have two muted strums immediately after our last bend, and then we do this. So that's one on the D12, one on the A12, two on the D12, two on the G10. So then we get into these repeated bends here. We're bending the B13 and hitting the E10 twice. We do this three times. And then on the last one, we hit that B12, the E10 once, and then we switch to the E13 and bend that up full step, and then hit it unbent. So let's do that slow. And then near the end of measure 107, we end things off like this. So that's on the B13, we're gonna hit that once. And we're gonna pull off from 13 to 10 on the B. Hit the G12, hammer on from 10 to 13 on the B. And then we're gonna do a pull off from 13 to 10. And then bend the G12 up. Return it to its pitch, pull off to G10, land on the D12. So, from the top, then we just hit that B13 out of nowhere with some percussive notes on either side. And then we repeat that bend on the G12, return to pitch, pull off to 10, and then land on that. D12. It's kind of like this. Instead of... He's not really going... He's just kind of madly hitting the notes because it's pretty much a muscle memory lick. And then we end it off with... So that's 10 to 12 on the G. Hitting the B10. Pulling off from 12 to 10 on the G. Landing on the D12. Then we're gonna go 12 to 10, pull off. Landing on that 12 fret of the eight. Do that twice. So. Let's do that whole thing slow. This one's a handful, so you're gonna to have to like slow it down and really look at the tab. And again, that very fast part, we're doing that. It's like, 
you can also do a pull off from 13 to 10 if you want. If you want to play it the same each time, but if as long as you hit that B13, you get going fast enough, no one notices and it sounds all right in the end. So that is solo number two. And then he switches back to the normal sound for the chorus. Measure 109 is chorus two. It's very similar to what we learned before. All different and improvised. So make it your own and you'll be very close to what he did on the track. Measure 129 is John Mayer solo number three. We've got a dirty overdrive sound on again, pick up in uh, position number five, and we have a bunch of parallel octaves in this solo. Sounds like this. Thing off. Parallel octaves are a lot of fun. What we're doing here is, in this instance, we've got uh, first finger on A10, and our pinky is going to be the same note but one octave up on B13. And we're going to mute the G string in between the D and the B. And Mayer is sliding these up these intervals. And that's the neat thing about parallel octaves. They, they're they non-committal, they're neither major nor minor, and you can slide them up and not get in too much trouble. You'll notice that we have two fret spaces when they start on the D string. If a parallel octave is starting on the A string, there's only one fret in between. In this case, we've got one here where our first finger is on the A10, and our third finger will be on the G12. So when you're doing that, uh, you've got one space in between. When you're down on the D string, you've got two. So just remember that due to the way the guitar is tuned. So Mayer starts his parallel octave, first finger on the 10th fret, and then we have the octave on the B13. And he goes to the 12th, to the 14th, to the 15th, to the 17th, where we ended off, and we go and slide out. And that last one, he's not only hitting a parallel octave with the D17 and the B20, he's actually hitting the E20. And he's going so slow. And the next measure he does this. So we have a parallel octave where we started with our first finger on the D10, pinky on the B13, and we go then we switch to this parallel octave. First finger on the A10, third finger on the 12. Slide that down two frets, so slow. Continuing with measure 131. And these are really strange sounding when you slow them down. We do this. That starts off with the first finger on the D10, pinky on the B13. And we're gonna hit that once. Then we're gonna go with our third finger and hit the D12 all by itself. And then hit that parallel octave again. So it starts off with this. Like that. Then we slide it up to the 12 position, hit that three times. And then we have a muted strum, and we go back to the 10th position twice, and then we go up, so our first finger is on A10, third finger is on G12, hit that twice, and then we hit the open E twice. So, one, two, three. One more time, very strange slow. And the next part is so that's kind of neat we're going to slide up we're going to do a parallel octave with our first finger on the a8 third finger on the g10 we're going to slide that up to the 10th fret hit the open low e slide that up again to the 12th fret low e again then we're going to 
flip over really quickly to the chord we started off with. So first finger on the D10, pinky on the B13. And then we're going to shift over to a new one now. And when this is the first one on the G string. So we have our first finger on the G9, pinky on the E12. We hit that six times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then open low E. Slow. Then in measure 133, we're going to do a two note shape with a hammered on portion. The first part is barring with our first finger G10 and B10. And then the second half of the chord is second finger on the B11. And then our third finger on the G12. So we're going between these, these two shapes. So we start off first on the 10th fret bar. We hit that once. Then we hammer our fingers down for the second part. Lift off. Hit the low E. And then back to the, the hammered on portion at the 11 and 12. And then we start the next measure with the chord pressed down. And then we hit the uh, press down one once. Have a rest. Ending off with the just the 10th fret bar. So let's do that slow. And then we're into the ending of the song where we just kind of do this. And that's kind of a, a play on the chorus. So it's E10 and then A12 and then A13 to G10. And then A10 to G9. And then we have E8. And then A10 to G9. And then we have 8, 10, 8. Then we do a little power chord, bar chord, two noter. First finger on the E10, third finger on the A12. And we go 1, 2, 3, and slide out. We'll do that slow. it for the John Mayer part of the tune. At this point you're done unless you want to learn guitar 2 and guitar 3 slide guitar which I'm going to go into now. So guitar 2, I've already gone over the guitar 2 chord solo which is really nice but here's what he's doing in some of the verses. So in verse 2 measure 49 when Mayer is doing the that kind of thing, guitar 2 is going So what we're doing there is I have my first finger and I'm barring the last two 8th fret strings. And we start with that. And we have a little muted chunk. And then my third finger is barring D10, G, and B10. To, and just going back and forth from that. And you can add some scratches in there. So we're always leading off with the 8th fret part. And just keep doing that. Yeah, it's the only time he really starts playing is in measure 49. Earlier you can kind of see him with his volume turned down, just kind of, you know, chilling on the side of the stage. So that is what Guitar 2 does during the verse 2. Starting in measure 73, which is the slide solo, Guitar 2 plays this. This is a D minor 7th, so we've got our first finger on the A5, and then after that it's 7, 5, 6. And then the next chord is a G minor, we have our third finger on the D5, and then it's 3, 3, 3. And then we have a regular C, first finger is on the A3, and then it's 5, 5, 5 with the third finger, and then back to the D minor 7th. And we start off the measure with the D minor 7th and then stop it and then move to the G minor and it's a slow strum 
and then he has, a, he has an upstroke thing to stop it from sounding. And then we wait a bit and move into the C. Also stop that. And then we rush in the final measure the D minor 7. So. for the measures of the slide solo. And then he does something similar to that in the John Mayer solo that we'll look at. During the John Mayer solo, starting measure 81, he plays the G minor just at the beginning of each uh, measure. And then we go to the C. Then we go to an F. And then an A sharp. And he just cycles that through the solo. So we've seen that already, the D. Uh, the G minor into the C and then this is our typical F so I've got my thumb on the E1 mute the A string and then we're 3, 2, 1, 1 and then we just shift that up to the 6th fret for the A sharp major which is 6, mute, and then 8, 7, 6, 6 so pretty straightforward Just repeat that for the next measures to end off guitar solo number one. Guitar two during measure 101, which is guitar solo number two on the John Mayer side, he just continues that chord solo he did before. So it's except this time John Mayer is soloing over it. So it becomes a very nice uh, chord progression underneath John Mayer's second solo. The only slight difference being on that second pass where he's we're, we're going to the D10 and G9 and then we slide right down to the G7 B6 and we do that. We do one muted strum and then two and then four muted strums. So, so he just basically continues playing what he was before when he was all by himself and uh, Mayer's playing over top of it. Measure 37, guitar three, slide guitar during the pre-chorus does this. So I'm just going to play that slow, starting at measure 37, follow along in the tab, starting at the 10th fret. So 10th fret, slide into that on the B, slide down to 5, up to 6, and then 6 to 8, back to 6, slide into G7. Continuing with measure 41, slow. So that's sliding into the B11. And then from the 13, we kind of do these pull downs for going uh, 10, 8 on the B. Then back up the 10 and down to 6. And then up to 8, back to 6, and then to G7 again. Then we go D7, and then slide from 5 to 7 on the G. And that ends it off. And that's uh, the first slide part. Measure 73 is the slide solo. It starts with a pickup measure just for that. Measure 73 on slow. So we're sliding up to the B11, and then 10, 8, and then B11, 2, 6, and then 8 to 10, to 5. 
then we have so that's eight six seven on the G six on the B and then three on the G7 and starting from the middle of measure 76 we're hitting the 10th fret on the B and E and then going up to 13 on the high E and then 15 on the E and B and we're sliding to the B13 and then 10 12 on the G and then slide down from 12 on the D to 10 and then 12 on the A to 10 then we come sliding back into the A10 then we're going to go 12 12 on the A and D coming back to the A12 and then 10 12 on the G back to 10 on the G and then 12 10 12 on the D and then we come way down to the uh, A3 here and we go to 5 hit 5 again and then 3 to 5 again so that last part is whole thing slow And that's the slide solo. I am not a slide player, but I can move it up and down the neck and pluck some of the right notes. So this is just a learning thing for most people. Yeah, time for me to put the slide down now. Back away. So there it is, Believe Fly version from Where the Light Is. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and we'll see you next time. All right, how about you put the I want the Pi Fuzz uh, mid frequency up uh, 7.14. Hurts. Give that a shot. But it's not right. It's like not exactly the same. How about treble up a tiny bit? Does that sound like? How about um? Oh. What'd you do? I like it. I like it, but uh, we can't use it, and you're fired.